The chapter in which God dooms the animals, officially, to be food for humans, and his current favorite human, Noah, gets drunk and curses an innocent child to a life of slavery for the actions of its father. Loving, merciful fun for the whole family. Stick around. Friends, protect yourself from the curses of an angry, drunken Noah by clicking that subscribe button and hitting that little notification bell. Stay safe, my friends. Now, on with the show. This chapter truly is a testament to God. A testament that it's a bloodthirsty monster with concern for little other than blood and pain and misery. It also, again, shows us how multiple tellings of the same story have been jammed together to make a single, almost unintelligible tale. So, as with the last chapter, we still have two concurrent stories being told here. Which is why in verse 1 of chapter 9, God tells Noah and his sons to be fruitful and multiply, and why it does it again in verse 7. Rather than reading you every word of both stories like I did in the last video, I'm just going to show you briefly where the two stories run. Verse 1, God tells Noah to be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Verse 7, God says it again, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Verse 2, God tells Noah all animals will fear man and that they are given into your hands. Verse 3 says the same thing but shorter and more direct, everything that moves about will be food for you, I give you everything. Verse 4 actually looks like it should be tacked on to the end of verse 3, I give you everything but don't eat meat with lifeblood still in it. Stop. Next paragraph, similar theme, separate idea. It's still about blood but the thoughts are completely different. Now it's about killing people, then the next line is about animals, then the following line is back to talking about humans. And for each human being too, I will demand an accounting for the lifeblood of another human being. Do we have to account for every animal we kill, or is it saying animals will have to account for any humans they kill? Hard to say. Moving on. As with one of the two stories comprising the previous chapter, the God in this chapter also likes to sing. Does the God of peace and love sing of mercy and forgiveness or joy and happiness? Hell no. Not surprisingly, it sings about blood and retribution. Genesis 9 verse 6, whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. The God of death loves blood. If blood is spilled, only more blood will satiate this monster. No turning the other cheek here, no mention of mercy. Now, this whole paragraph containing verses 8 through 11 is repeated in verse 12 through 16. Yeah, there are some differences, like the latter version has rainbows, but clearly they're two versions of the same thing with slight differences. Again, two stories jammed into one. So now that I'm done talking about the two in one angle, let's look at the morality of this evil god monster and its favorite humans throughout the chapter. The first part of both stories is God telling Noah and his sons to be fruitful and multiply. Then God gives man dominion over the animals. I want to take a moment to point out that at this point in the story, animals have done nothing nothing, and played no role other than being passengers on Noah's Ark and being used as burnt offerings to God. And now they are being subject to being killed and eaten by man. And not just that, but God even specifically says in verse 2, the fear and dread of you will fall on all the beasts of the earth. Again, no mention of mercy or love, just fear and dread, blood and suffering in this God creature's book. Then God says to not kill each other, but if you do, the one doing the killing must be killed. Then God sings his song demanding blood for blood. Then God makes a covenant with essentially everything on earth to never kill it again with a global flood. Now we're to the end of the chapter and things switch from God's covenant with Noah and the creatures of the earth to focusing on Noah and his family specifically. Remember, Noah and his family are chosen by God. First, for context, let's hearken back to chapter 6 verse 9, which says, This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man blameless among the people of his time. And he walked faithfully with God. And chapter 7, verse 1, The Lord then said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. And finally, Genesis 9, verse 1, Then God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. So these are supposed to be the best of the best. Literally, God's chosen specifically saved by God to repopulate the earth. So what's the first thing Noah does after he gets off the ark and burns some animals, of course? Well, he builds a winery. They are literally still living in tents and this guy makes a winery. Then he gets drunk and passes out naked in his own tent, which apparently is a bad thing. 
His youngest son, Ham, goes into the tent, sees him naked, and then goes outside and tells his brothers, who then cover Noah up without seeing him naked. Then Noah wakes up, finds out that his son, Ham, saw him naked, and then he does what? Multiple choice. He thanks Ham for letting someone know and getting him covered up. He forgives Ham for seeing him naked. He asks forgiveness from his family for becoming so drunk and not covering his junk. He curses his own grandson, Ham's innocent son, Canaan, to a life of slavery for Ham's actions. Remember, before you answer, this is Noah, chosen above all others because of his rightness with God. Hmm. Yep, you guessed it. He cursed an innocent child to slavery. Genesis 9 verses 24 through 27 says, When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. He also said, Praise be to the Lord, the God of Shem, may Canaan be the slave of Shem. May God extend Jepheth's territory. May Jepheth live in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be the slave of Jepheth. A quick shout out to Canaan and Jepheth if you're watching. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, guys. Sorry. Je Je Jepath, Jepheth. Canaan, Canaan. E either way. Sorry, guys. So to wrap up chapter nine, God gives animals to humans for food. Lucky animals. God demands blood for blood. Swears off global floods. Then Noah gets drunk and curses his innocent grandson to slavery. Another chapter with lots of pain, blood, misery, and fear, but no love or kindness or mercy to be found. Oh, sure, he promised to never drown the world again. But did you read how he described humans in the last chapter? Genesis 8 verse 21. Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from child. Childhood. <laughs> These are not the words of a loving God. No, that sounds like a creature who hates and is disgusted by mankind. And if you ask me, this assertion is vindicated by the fact, the fact, that this God monster goes on to slaughter its own followers en masse for the slightest infraction throughout the Bible. You really can't argue this point because God literally just finished killing off the entire human race except Noah and his family. And not to put too fine a point on it, Noah's descendants will be slaughtering each other in no time on the command of God. Who does Moses, a descendant of Shem, the son of Noah, slaughter on his way to the promised land? That's right, the Canaanites, the descendants of Ham, the son of Noah. Murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill, murder, death, kill. Exactly what you'd expect from the evil god monster of Abraham and its book of death. Remember, ward off any drunken Noah curses by hitting that subscribe button and then that little notification bell. So what do you think? Do you still see the two different stories being jammed together here? Can you find love and mercy hidden among the fear-mongering and death in this chapter? Let me know in the comments below.